Welcome to the State of the Union from Brussels. It can't be said that it was a surprise, but the suspense over who will be the European People's Party's main candidate in the European elections is over. Ursula von der Leyen will run for re-election and said this week that she is excited about the possibility of a second term as president of the European Commission. And the EPP is excited to have her as a candidate, given the notoriety she has gained in the European Union and the rest of the world. But at her meeting with the party's group in the European Parliament, Ursula von der Leyen declared her red lines on who the EPP can make alliances with. The cut-off line is, do you stand for democracy? Do you defend our values? Are you very firm in the rule of law? Are you supporting Ukraine? And are you fighting against uh, Putin's attempt to weaken and divide Europe? And these answers have to be very clear. Von der Leyen was praised for her work to build consensus for the European Union support for Ukraine following Russia's full-scale invasion. One of these consensus emerged this week with the approval of the 13th package of sanctions against Russia. It targets companies that help Russia obtain sanctioned products, including those based in China, Turkey and North Korea. And to show his shock at the death in prison of Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny, the head of diplomacy announced a proposal that links the two issues. As um, Yulia Navalnaya has told us, Putin is not Russia and Russia is not Putin. We have just issued a statement on Alexei's death. And I have proposed to the ministers to rename our global human rights sanctions regime with his name. This will be a way of uh, keeping his memory alive. Foreign ministers expressed their political agreement with this proposal, Borre said. But there was no consensus on a statement calling for a ceasefire in Gaza, where 29,000 Palestinians have died, according to the Hamas-led health ministry. Once again, unsurprisingly, Hungary was the only one of the 27 countries left out, including in calling on Israel not to carry out a ground operation in the city of Rafah. 1.5 million Palestinians are sheltering there, and the humanitarian catastrophe would reach a new level, the United Nations warned. The manager of one of its agencies, the UNDP, dedicated to development, had meetings with the European Commission at the beginning of the week. Akim Steiner spoke next with Euronews. Akim Steiner, UNDP manager, thank you very much for coming uh, to our studio. We are, of course, now worried about the situation in the south, uh, in Rafa near the uh, border with Egypt. Do you think an evacuation of Palestinians to Egypt would be somehow a solution. I only want to refer to the Secretary General's call and I think this is the only answer right now, a humanitarian ceasefire. To rely on um, a evacuation of uh, you know, maybe a million people who are already internally displaced under these circumstances could, as many have said, result in an absolutely catastrophic loss of life. Therefore, the speculation about where else people could move, I think, is not one that in the UN we consider to be either feasible, nor do we wish to be part of a forced relocation of people. Will the UNDP and other UN agencies somehow assist or replace uh, the United Nations Agency for uh, Palestinian refugees, considering the whole situation of accusation of uh, possible uh, employment of Hamas members. As many of us have said in the United Nations family, there is no alternative to relying on UNRWA's infrastructure, service and capacity right now to provide humanitarian support in a situation that is already extreme, both in terms of the lack of uh, support that we are able to provide from the outside because of access, and many of the restrictions, but also because of the difficult situation of operating within Gaza. We are looking at how we can work with each other in order to expand the space for humanitarian support and then ultimately 
also to help people recover. That is as well the situation in Ukraine, which I imagine was also featuring high in your discussions with the European Union uh, counterpart. Um, is there already a, a possibility of doing some uh, reconstruction and long-term planning for Ukraine? What has defined UNDP's partnership with Ukraine uh, ever since Russia attacked Ukraine is essentially our um, contribution and our partnership in helping uh, Ukraine to keep basic state and governance services um, operational. And we are focusing also on early recovery and reconstruction in the context of small and medium scale enterprises. Many in Ukraine have lost everything, their business, it may have been a, you know, a hairdresser salon or a car repair workshop or a digital business. Um, they have lost everything, they have had to move, they become internally displaced. One of the priorities of the Ukrainian authorities has been how to help them uh, be able to re-establish themselves as entrepreneurs uh, to not only regain a livelihood but also the dignity of not simply being um, somebody who can no longer rely on themselves to earn an income. Akim Steiner, UNDP manager, thank you very much for coming to the program and for this important uh, contribution. Thank you. To close the program, let's talk a little about art. Traditionally, the presidency of the Council of the EU organizes some cultural events. In the case of Belgium, it decided to celebrate 100 years of surrealism with two major exhibitions. A story of not laughing can be seen at the Brussels Bolzard Art Center. The other, titled Imagine, is on display at the Royal Museums of Fine Arts. One could say that some political events in Brussels are often the scene of some surreal moments. That's it for this edition. Thank you for watching.